A summer evening on the Korosh River in Central Europe. Its waters are mirror smooth, but on this particular day of the year, all that is about to change. Giant mayflies, Europe's largest, are starting to rise to the surface and struggle out of the skins in which they lived as larvae. At first they come in ones and twos. Soon there will be millions. For two years they've lived underwater. Now they must fly to find a mate. This should be the climax of their lives. The first to appear are quickly taken by predators. But soon the swarms are so huge that neither fish nor birds can make any impact on them. The first mayflies to emerge in this mass hatching on this river in Hungary are all males. As soon as they free themselves from the larval skin on the surface, they take off and seek safety in the banks. And there they hang in trees and bushes, or indeed on my finger. And the reason they have to rest like this is because they still have to make one final molt. Their wings that were transparent now have a handsome blue tinge and the elegant filaments at the end of their abdomens are even longer than before. They're looking for mates, but they have a problem. They can't feed, for they have neither mouth nor stomach. They have to fuel their flight entirely from the reserves of fat that they built up when they were larvae feeding in the river. But that fat will only last them for about half an hour of flight time. So the race to mate now becomes a frantic one. The females begin to rise to the surface and the males fly up and down the river searching for them. As soon as they find one, they all pounce on her, competing to be the one to fertilize her eggs. But the struggle of doing so saps their limited energy. Before long, they begin to run out of fuel, and though they flutter despairingly, they can't maintain themselves in the air. Win or lose, their lives are almost over, and dead bodies start to litter the surface of the water. But the females are still in the air. They're flying upstream, judging the depth of the river and the currents in it to find a place where they can lay their eggs so that they will float back downriver to the same sort of place where the adults themselves lived as larvae. The ancestral mayflies were among the first creatures of any kind to take to the air about 320 million years ago. For them, as for their living descendants, flight was a brief but invaluable way of finding a mate and expanding their breeding territories. <laughs> 